This is Mamu Regional Hospital. Okay. And this is our OPD. This is where we normally register our cases. When clients come, they first of all sit down here. We sometimes give them a talk in the morning on COVID-19 and any new thing that happening. So they are registered and then from there, we usher them to the sample taking place. So at the end of the day, there are some that we have to do microscopic examination. We still continue with our general routine laboratory test. But what makes us come on board with the COVID-19 is the fact that we were called upon to start taking sample for the clients who had been suspected of having COVID-19. So some of us decided to courageously step forward and then we were made to take samples at the hotels so that they could be tested at Noguchi. In your statement, you said courageously stood out to be part of the national team taking the samples. How has this, I mean, how did you decide to do that? Well, psychologically, I might say that this is a good opportunity to speak about this. Uh, initially, when my wife got to know that I have stepped forward to take sample, she was very, very much disturbed because all the things we are seeing on telly, Italy and other countries, people dying, she was like, why will you do that? And so I had to psychologically psych her up that this is my profession. And the day I decided it was simple, if I don't do it, then who will do it? And if we don't do it and the client or the patient or the suspected cases get into the community and the community spread becomes so much and people are infected, then I have failed as a medical lab scientist. So that was what informed me to step forward and put my life on the line. And wearing those jackets wasn't easy. You could sweat. You could see that you are sweating. Water will be dripping out of you. And you have to do it until you are done with every case. So looking back now, what is your assessment of what you did, that decision you took? I am very, very happy. I'm very glad I took that bold decision. Because I can say that what I did is part of the nation being mentioned elsewhere internationally. My small contribution has really helped to identify those who are at risk or those who are positive so that they can be taken out of the population. So knowing that um, such a person that you have isolated to have his or her samples taken to Noguchi, that person may already be going through some anxiety. When you are taking the swab and you are doing all of that, do you have a chat with them? How do you take them through so that it is a smooth process for the patient? Yes, that is one thing. In this, in the taking of the sample, you need to add a little bit of humor to it. You don't just go and say that, hey, get up, I want to take your throat swab, and then you start putting things there. You have to console the person. Oh, madam, I'm coming to take your sample. It's, I'm going to take, use this to take a throat swab. It will, it's not going to be that painful. I'm going to do, I'm a professional, so I'll do it in such a way that you're not going to go through anything like vomiting. Trust me, I, I, I build confidence with the client. So at the end of the day, there is a small smile. There was one uh, lady at the ward when I was going to take the sample. She said she will not allow anybody to take the sample. Then I asked the mother, is she the last born? The mother said yes. I said, ah, you brought a last born here and you didn't tell us to pamper her. Everybody stop disturbing her. I'm going to buy toffee for her. I'll make sure. She was an ugly person. I'll make sure. Then I told her, please don't mind anybody who, who is not trying to treat you well. I, then I, I, I just went down to talk to her gradually. Then I realized that with time she was responding and we were able to take the sample. Those are some of the things we do just to win them for the sample to be taken. So has your wife um, gradually accepted what you are doing so far and how is she... Um, dealing with you in the house, does she still come close? In fact, not yet. <laughs> it's such that she's also educated, so it's like, you're doing this, can you stay a little bit, can you practice the social distance? In the house? Distances in the house, make sure you don't come too close. The moment you try to clear your throat, please, please, please. So, but on a lighter note, it has been uh, a worth. Uh, Jenny going and she has been there to support me in everything I do. So yes. Children there? Yes, so I have two kids, a, a girl and a boy. And how are the children also warmed up to what daddy is doing? Surprisingly, they listen to the news all the time. Uh -huh. 
So they give me updates. So they sometimes lecture when you come from work, they tell you that daddy, you are not supposed to come into the house without changing. So please go and change and bath before we can touch. So they will tell you even before you come into the house. So I think with that, we, we, ha we have a good rapport. Okay. So yes. then, if you don't mind, mention your names and say whatever you want to tell them. Wow. My, my boy is uh, Elon Brian Strigbo. My girl is Kiba Ejram Strigbo. And my wife is Rita Strigbo. I just want to tell them that it wouldn't have been okay without them. I, I cherish them and it is them that give me strength to carry on. Mm -hmm.